ain't afraid to throw down. I just want to be lazy and watch Netflix. Why do I have no self-control? Next thing I know, I'm headed to see the world's biggest ball of yarn. Hey everyone, I'm Laura and welcome back to my channel where I talk about all things weight loss, mental health, and take you along on my 200 pound weight loss journey. If you would like to know more about me and my journey so far, make sure to check out the rest of my videos linked in the description box down below. It is only 2 o'clock in the afternoon and it is actually cold in the shade. Like literally, I have my blanket on my lap. Man, I don't even know how old this thing is. It's got to be at least a decade. No, it's older than that because I'm pretty sure it was either my mom or my grandma made it when I was in high school. <laughs> Damn, I'm old. <laughs> when I was younger, I didn't understand why women got so upset when people asked about their age, but now that I'm like 30, I get it. I feel you. All right, guys, so today I thought I would talk about identifying triggers to weight loss barriers like binging, emotional eating, skipping workouts, falling off track, giving up on your weight loss journey altogether, overeating, emotional eating, so on and so forth. Specifically the simple therapeutic technique that I use in order to find my triggers. I believe it is so important to recognize your triggers because that's how you can really be successful on your weight loss journeys. It helps you to be proactive and plan ahead for those barriers that you know can completely throw you off track. You know, like one minute I'm headed towards Disneyland and the next thing I know, I'm headed to see the world's biggest ball of yarn. So today I would like to introduce you to my trusty friend, the one that's always got my back, ain't afraid to throw down and call me out when I'm acting a fool, the cognitive triangle. So the cognitive triangle is basically a simple representation of the relationship between our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors specifically after a triggering event or situation. More specifically, it shows how our thoughts change the way we feel, which then changes how we act. And without an interruption or intervention in that cycle, like you using your coping skills or reframing and challenging negative thoughts, the process just repeats itself over and over and over again. For example, let's say that you're at your mom's birthday party and you make the decision to have a couple pieces of pizza and a small piece of birthday cake because YOLO! And after you leave the party and you're driving home, you start having thoughts like, I shouldn't have eaten that. I'm going to be like five pounds heavier tomorrow. I just ruined all of the hard work that I already did this week. Why do I have no self-control? I should just give up now. And so on and so on. And those thoughts tend to lead to emotions like anger, guilt, shame, frustration, and just overall wanting to give up. So then you see a Taco Bell coming up and the behavior part of your cognitive triangle kicks in. You pull in order two party packs of crunchy tacos with a mountain of mild sauce and binge. Why? Because your mind and body knows that by eating that way, you will have at least a few moments of reprieve from your thoughts and emotions. So we had a triggering event, eating things not on your diet at a party. We had some thoughts. I just ruined all the hard work I did. I should just give up. And some emotions, anger, guilt, shame, frustration, and we had a resulting behavior using your coping skill of binge eating. And this cycle without an interruption will just continue. For example, after you binge, you might have even more thoughts like, I'm never going to lose the weight, so why bother? I don't know why I thought I could do this, which then just leads to emotions like more shame and more guilt and more frustration, which then leads to more behaviors. And if it goes on long enough, it might even result in you giving up on your weight loss journey completely. So to recap, a triggering event leads to thoughts, 
which results in emotions, which leads to either healthy or unhealthy coping skills. And without an interruption like challenging your negative thoughts or using positive coping skills, the process can just repeat itself. And it's also important to note that this doesn't just apply to negative thoughts. If you're able to reframe your thought of, I just ruined all of the hard work that I did this week to, yeah, I ate some extra calories, but I'm still making progress towards my goals. And tomorrow I can just work out a little bit longer, maybe eat a little bit less calories or do a low carb day and I'll still be making progress towards my goals then that kind of thought is just going to lead to emotions like acceptance, calm, determination, even empowerment, which then leads to the type of behaviors I just described. Having a low carb day the next day, tacking on an extra 20 minutes to your workout, eating two or 300 calories less the next day. So that's basically the cognitive triangle. Now you're probably wondering, so how do I personally use the cognitive triangle to help me identify my triggers? Well, it's really super simple. When I have a behavior like binging, emotional eating, skipping a workout, etc. As soon as I can, I sit down and I fill out a cognitive triangle for that behavior. I start first with filling in the behavior, so binging, which already happened. And then I ask myself, what emotions led up to that behavior? Then I ask what thoughts caused those emotions? And then what event led to those thoughts in the first place? And once you're aware of the events or situations thoughts and emotions that lead up to an unhealthy behavior, i.e. a barrier to weight loss. It is so much easier to recognize when you're being triggered next time. Let's do an example using a recent barrier for me. So a couple of days ago, I skipped two workouts in a row and it wasn't for an acceptable reason like being super, super sore or sick or anything like that. So on my cognitive triangle, I listed skip workout as my behavior. The emotions that I identified leading up to me skipping my workouts were stress and frustration. And the thoughts were things like, I don't want to work out. Why should I even bother? I just want to be lazy and watch Netflix. I deserve a break after this week. And the triggering event that I identified was a very stressful meeting at work where we were given new expectations around productivity by our agency. What this cognitive triangle told me is that when I am stressed and frustrated, especially because of work, it is so much more difficult for me to be able to stick to my workout routine. And now in the future, I can be more aware of this and plan ahead. Okay guys, so I hope that I explained the cognitive triangle well and that it makes sense and that this will be a helpful tool for you guys on your weight loss journeys. And I will link some free cognitive triangle worksheets in the description box below. Just be warned that they're pretty plain, but they'll work for now. And I'm definitely in the future planning on maybe making some like cuter ones, you know, with like more color and more personality. And in part two of this video, I will be talking about how to proactively plan for the future and interrupt the cognitive triangle process using healthy coping skills and cognitive coping strategies. So you can work through your triggers and comment down below and let me know what are some of your triggers. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by subscribing and giving it two thumbs way, way up and make sure to tap on that notification bell so you can join me next time. Until then, remember to keep calm and check your cognitive triangle. Bye everyone.